Every time I watch this, I kind of like it a little bit more. Solo, a Star Wars story. Directed by Ron Howard with a release date of May 2018. Straight up, I'm probably like one of, what, 15 people that actually managed to enjoy themselves a bit with this, so... Spoiler, I didn't find it that bad. Production budget of 275 million, with a domestic take of 213 million, a foreign take of 179 million, for a worldwide total of 392 million, for a profit of about 120-ish million dollars. I didn't write that bit down, so I had to do some uh, maths on the fly. Not my strong suit. Yeah, $120 million profit. This movie got smashed. It was really panned very hard. Starring Alden Ehrenrich. Ehrenrich? Mm. Woody Harrelson, Emily Clark, Donald Glover, Juno Suotamo, and quite a few others. Not to mention, and surprisingly, Paul Bettany, the voice of Linda Hunt. John Favreau's in there somewhere. Warwick Davis, you actually get to see his face this time. And, well, that'd be a spoiler. But it's unexpected and kind of cool. Characters, okay, let's see now. I I actually enjoyed pretty much 95% of the casting in this. Um, standouts to me, Chewie's back, love that. Finally got to see what a Wookiee can do. Finally got to see a mad Wookiee in action, and he's good. Oh, I like seeing Chewie get in a combat, kick a bit of ass, you know, be a hero. That was some fun. Super keen on that. Lando. Lando is very cool. Mr. Calderizan is super silky smooth. Style and swagger. The whole time, even when it's all going wrong, he's still maximum charisma. Loved it. Woody Harrelson is always a delight to watch on screen. He's, he's a lot of fun. I, I liked his duplicitous sort of character. Menacing sort of camaraderie he had is a very strange mix. And I honestly don't think anyone else could pull that off other than Woody Harrelson. Then had all the supporting characters, I enjoyed them too. You've got L3, you've got the leader of the Raiders, you've got, well, you know, Paul Bettany's villain. Uh, that was very cool. Name dropping other characters throughout there. I mean, Aura Singh gets a mention. Very happy with that. I love those side characters, those background characters that appear every now and then. I enjoyed that. Admittedly, it's about her death, but still, they mentioned her. Han's girlfriend, her, uh, felt very, mm, didn't really stand out to me. But hey, uh, you know, that's all right. She did her job. She wasn't bad. I want to know more about her. Bring me finally to Han Solo. Was he Han Solo? Kinda. As a smuggler, runabout, charming scoundrel. Yeah, all right. We're good with that. As Han Solo, though. Hmm. Not so sure. I, moments. There were moments, yes. But then he really wasn't. Um... Mind you, to quote my wife now, trying to replicate Harrison Ford is an impossible job. As for Al... What's his name? Alden. As for Alden, seriously, you'd be, you're asking him to step up and be Han Solo? I mean, really? How? I don't know. I enjoyed watching Paul Bettany be the very casual, friendly psychopath. That was fun, actually. I, I didn't mind that at all. And it was nice to see the Han Chewie dynamic. That was cool too. I'm going to go ahead and give characters in this. I think I'm going to give characters a 3.25. There was really not that much wrong with them. And I bought into them a fair bit. I, I got attached to them and I enjoyed their presence on screen. There wasn't a moment where I was tired of anybody. And that's a good thing. 3.25. Story. Okay, let's look at story. What was this story in essence? Okay, yes, it was an origin story for a beloved space hero. Pirate smuggler guy. And to be an origin story for that sort of character, it needs to be a heist, or a con, or a variety of thievery smuggling jobs. And it was. It was, in fact, a space heist. And I didn't really find much fault in that. Yeah, it's a bit contrived, but they always are. Yeah, it was a bit over the top, but again, it's a Star Wars story. So, and they're always, let's face it, over the top. So... A Star Wars space heist has got to be that extra level. It's ridiculous, ridiculous foolishness. The high stakes foolishness, the sometimes convoluted plot, the double, double, double crosses. That was suitable for a heist movie. Now, there are levels of complexity to heist movies. Actually, the more I think about this, this is not a heist. This is a straight up robbery. This is a space robbery that happens. No, no, it's just a robbery, actually. <laughs> That does explain, while it's having so much trouble, 
matching up the complexities of a heist in my head with this movie. Because they weren't there, really. So, as a robbery, the whole story makes a lot more sense. In fact, I'm happier with it now that I've figured out it's just a robbery. They did some interesting things with the story, too. So a couple of things I wasn't expecting. L3's robot revolution and slave revolt that she instigated on Kessel. That I did not see coming. And I enjoyed watching the fact that no one else in the group expected this to happen either. I, I really liked the chaos that threw everything into. Didn't expect so many character deaths. That's the other thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, they're just support characters, but they went through a few, and that was also good. That was that kept the stakes fairly high. Yeah, all right, you knew the main characters were going to come out of it. You knew three were going to come out of that okay. But that's not the point. The point is, everyone else was under threat. My wife really enjoyed it as well. She just didn't know where the story was going to go. And she's watched a lot of these with me now. She liked it more than some of the newer movies, which is also saying a fair bit. Hey, Joe. Did you prefer Solo than, say, Episodes 1, 2, and 3? You did prefer Solo? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. When it comes down to story, what it's meant to be is the origin of Han Solo, for which it is serviceable. It's okay. You get to see where he gets a lot of his stuff, it gets a lot of his attitude from, and the blah, blah, blah. Not terrible. As a space robbery in the Star Wars universe, it's kind of cool fun. I, I didn't mind that at all. So you take the ups, you take the downs, and I think I'm going to end up on a three with this as well. Yeah, yeah, any major negatives are pretty much overruled by the fact there was a cool robbery in a Star Wars story. So, yeah, I'm good with that. Give it another three. Look and feel. Okay, this is where it scores high. Because this looked and felt and sounded like a Star Wars movie. This was some good stuff. we got a whole bunch of things you're already familiar with. Then we got a whole bunch of things we're not. We finally get to see Castle. We finally get to see the Millennium Falcon in premium condition. Mint. Out of the wrapper condition. Looking so nice. Getting to see the underside of the galaxy again. Getting to see some of the rougher edges of the galaxy and staying there. Not running off to some of the nice shiny planet. That was very cool. I'd like to see the Mandalorian turn up a couple of these worlds just to revisit them. That'd be a nice little tie-in. That'd be, that'd be very cool to see. That world where you get to see Han Solo running around as a trooper on the ground, that was awesome. That was another point of view of the Imperial War Machine and the general day-to-day -day of the Imperial Army. And it was good. I really, really like that. I mean, muddy, bloody, and horrible, really. There's people blowing up and dying all over the place. But it was just a different angle. And I love seeing the Star Wars universe through a different lens. We've got some new Imperial vehicles, some new Imperial troopers. Um, that was nice. I didn't mind that at all. Along with the relevant tech and action sequences that go with them. My wife and I, we loved all the musical score. Why they kept blending the music from different movies together whenever something relevant to that particular movie came up. I also noticed the lighting effects that they used. That was, that was very subtle in many ways, but and highly effective. It was a very dynamic movie to look at. It really looked good. Lots of action, but lots of good shots. Lots of scene setting. Your extreme wide shots, down the long shots, down the mid, down the close up. All setting a scene. Very, very nicely done. A lot to enjoy here. CGI blending nicely with the props and the puppetry, blending nice with the actors. So the look and feel for this movie, as a Star Wars movie, this was very, very Star Wars. So I'm going to give this a look and feel of a four. This was Star Wars in everything you saw and everything it did. Script and dialogue. Okay, not as good as look and feel. Uh, it was still pretty good. You know, you kind of bought into it. They gave you all the dialogue. They gave you exposition. They handed you the story pretty much on a plate. This is the bad guy. This is the good guy. Here's how they feel. Here's what they think. It's, you know, fairly standard Star Wars script in many respects. It fell down in a couple of places, again, much like every other Star Wars script I've ever seen. Apart from Mandalorian, but then again, I think I'm a little obsessed with that one, so I don't know if that opinion counts anymore. Some of the dialogue between Han and the girlfriend. Can't remember that character's name. Oh, well, sometimes it was good. Very natural, very flowing. Other times it was fairly forced. I don't really know... 
if the riders back themselves in a couple of holes or something. I, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm very certain, however, this would be a very difficult movie to write for. I'm not about to pretend to be a movie writer, and I'm not about to pretend that anything in the Star Wars universe is easy to do. It just felt a bit more clunky than I expected in a couple of points, but then it would pick itself up and run along and it was perfectly fine. Again, they were probably asking a lot of Alden, so I'm not sure how much of that was him and how much of that was them. The writing for their sub-characters and support characters, that was on point, that was pretty darn good, and I did enjoy watching Chewie and Han interact, and you got the feeling that there was a conversation going on there, and I did enjoy that. Speaking of enjoying themselves, my wife and I are pretty sure that Paul Bettany was having a blast. He seemed to be having a very good ham and cheese villain moment. That was very cool. And with his face done like that, it looked like grilled cheese. As I said before, it was also nice to get a tour of the universe and see different aspects. They wrote some really nice stuff into this. They also did some Easter eggs and some references. I don't know if they're all necessary. Finding out where the dice came from, that's okay, I suppose. Finding out where he got his blaster from. Not necessary, but still okay. You know, that wasn't bad, just don't know if it was needed. The Aura Singh comment, on the other hand, was great. Only certain people are going to understand that comment. If they knew who she was, that's cool. If they don't know who she is, they're now interested. So, that wasn't bad. I do want to mention one thing, so this is the spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the movie and you care, you might want to skip ahead. Three, two, one. This guy turning up. Darth Maul reappearing with the Robo Legs. I'm stunned, actually, that they did that. And it wasn't some tag-in sequence or something. I really... I really like the fact that they did that. That means it ties in pretty good with the Clone Wars, I think it is, he turns up in. I don't know, because I haven't seen those shows. But I'm told it's one of those, he rocks up again with the Meccano legs. So, that's Nifty. And Dathomir, that's familiar for some reason. I have to go look into that as well. It doesn't explain how he's back. I've got a feeling I've got to go watch the animated series for that. Which is, again, also cool, because it all ties together. Surely they can use that in something else, maybe in The Mandalorian, or another animated series, or something. They can use this, right? They could really use a lot in this movie to spread into other movies. I'm sure there are many people out there that would disagree with me completely. They'd hate to see this infection spread any further into the host. But, you know, come on. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed select parts of it that I like to see repeated elsewhere. Yeah, let's be clear on that. But on the whole, it was generally witty, generally clever, generally well done. Nothing too bad, but nothing superstar. So I'd say I'm going to be bringing script and dialogue back down to a three. Yeah, three I think is a fair score for that. Fun factor. Did I have fun? Well, yeah. In fact, as I said at the start, every time I watch this movie, I enjoy it just that little bit more. This is a space robbery. This is a storybook. This is a RPG game. This is all those sorts of things brought to life on the big screen. And I enjoy watching it. I have fun with this movie. It gives me all sorts of inspiration for my RPG games. It gives me all sorts of ideas for different sorts of characters. And I just love the way it fleshes out the Star Wars universe. To me, that's fun. I had a good time with this. If someone said, hey, do you want to watch Solo? I'd go, yeah, I'd love to watch Solo. As I also said before, I'm going to be one of like 15 people that actually enjoyed this film for what it is. So I'll be giving this a fun factor of 3.5. Final score, add them all together. We get a 16.75. I had some fun with this and I'll probably watch it again. I wouldn't have any trouble watching it again. And as for recommending it, now, this is where i got to be careful. Many Star Wars fans are very angry about anything that comes out at the moment. So it's really hard to recommend this to people. This one is really down to your personal preference and how law mastery or how personally emotionally attached you are to the Star Wars universe. But as a scoundrel driven sci-fi Star Wars robbery story, I had fun, I would recommend it, just go in knowing what you're gonna watch. So there's my review of Solo, a Star Wars story. Have you seen this movie? What did you guys think of it? Is there anyone else out there that actually enjoyed it? Or am I all alone? Please don't pick any fights in the comments section on the Facebook page, but do tell us, what do you think? Please like and share my review around. Hope you're having a great week, you find some time to watch a movie, and I'll catch you later.